Good evening, everybody. What is going on? It is May 9th, 2023, and it is time for the second episode of the Myco Game Show. I guess who it is? It's me and the one and only Philly Golden Teacher. What's up, PGT? Glad to be here. Glad to be at the Michael Game Show tonight. I'm glad all these people tuning in as well. Yeah, I'm checking out the chat. Let's see if I can. We're still editing stuff live here. Yes, yeah, if uh, let us know about any audio issues. How loud does he sound? Does it sound? Try it now. Say something, PGT. Testing. How does he One, sound two, now? Three. PGT's booming. Ooh we. Well, plus I always have this mask on. It's all right. We'll get all this sorted one day. Much better. Somebody said. Okay. There we go. Okay. So. Was that background's a little high? Okay. Yeah, that's good. We need this feedback. All right. We're still just uh, hanging out on the game show here before we get started. Hanging out with everybody. Everything sound good, everybody? We gotta, we gotta make sure everybody's okay. Okay. So this is the second episode of the Myco Game Show, and it's still gonna be, it's still basically a pilot episode. If you missed the first pilot episode, it's up on the channel here, Myco Game Show, and PGT was the host. And we figured this week we'll do the same thing, kind of switch it up, and I'll I'll be the host, and PGT will be the contestant. And the production team, also known as Mrs. PGT, put together a new PowerPoint for us to use. Much different questions. Maybe some people will learn different things tonight. You never know. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to get started here. Tim's asking, uh, where's my shoulder at? Oh, this, this thing doesn't have shoulders. It could be big. Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it doesn't have shoulders, I guess. Yeah, so tonight PGT is a cat. Switch it up a little bit. So yeah, we're going to get started. Um, since the on the last episode, the very first pilot episode, people were asking how they can super chat and the channel's not monetized yet so one way you can support the stream is using the streamlabs donation link which is right at the top of the description and you'll see in the bottom right of the screen right now we have a donation goal um it's just set at a hundred dollars and all of that goes right back into what we're doing with the game show future prizes for contestants giving back to everybody and that's going to allow us to keep things going the, the channel is pretty close to being monetized and it's just it's all part of the fun all right so let's get started is it pgt are you really ready for this game show hey right, win some cool prizes do you want to really be a golden mycologist i think so i think i want to be that's what i, I want to be when i grow up i do too all right so let's get started now remember this disclaimer okay the Michael Game Show is for entertainment purposes only. Although all the questions and answers have been researched and reconfirmed by the production team before the show, audiences shall not rely on the information presented in the show. So please use your own judgment and do your own research because the Michael Game Show is not responsible for your actions. Remember that common sense will almost always prevail. And this stream features materials protected by the fair use guidelines of section 107 of the Copyright Act. All rights are reserved to the copyright owners. Basically, don't sue me, bro. All right, yes. here we go. So we're gonna start with tier one. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect to see all my faces come up there like that. Yes, uh, I love this. Which face uh, should we pick in tier one for PGT? Uh, let's go with the PGT grinning one. I mean, let's start things off happy. The middle one? Because you've got two grinning. 
Yes, the the middle one. The middle grin. I agree. That looks nice. Hey, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. All right. So, what do you call someone who likes fungi? A. Fun guy, aka fungi. B. A cinephile. C. Arctophile. Or D. A mycophile. And now, before you answer, we uh, the production team has included a new feature. We do have a minute timer now. And I'm going to start that minute timer. You'll see it come across the question right now. Okay. So, <laughs> what do you oh, call yeah, someone? Who, yeah, <laughs> it takes a minute because it's a minute long. What do you mm. call someone who likes fungi? I mean, people who like fungi are fun guys, right? I mean, it can be fun That's gals. That's very true. Too. That's what I would say. It, it, it makes sense, but I mean, in this case, we want to keep things very neutral, and I, and I think Michael Fowl is, is where we're going to keep things at here. All right, final answer. Psychology base, mycology base enthusiasts, we call them Michael Files. That's All my right. final answer. Final answer. Let's see if PGT was correct. He was. Now, do you want to know a fun fact? Because I know I do. Let's see. Yeah, was Did you know? Fact. Michael File means a person who loves mushrooms, especially one whose hobby is hunting wild edible mushrooms. Arctophile means a person who loves teddy bears. A cinephile means a person who loves dogs. PGT is both a mycophile and a cinephile, but I'm sure that we are all arctophiles as well. Oh, that's, that, that, that's a good point. Yeah, me, me, I never consider myself a cinephile. Now I know. Now it's something I learned today. So if I'm not doing mycology. I'm I'm tending to to my dogs. I've I've got three little doggos that I love very much, and yeah, I spend a lot of time with them. Maybe they could be contestants on an episode. Yeah, they might get featured one day. So off to a great start. You've got the first question right, and you've got two more choices here in tier one. Uh, let's go with the bottom one, the PGT doing like a laughing face. Grinning even harder, yeah. Oh, here we go. Who are the collaborators of this t-shirt collaboration? Is it A, the wives of PGT and 90, or B, PGT's dogs, or C, PGT, his wife, and Michael Valley, or D, PGT, himself, and nobody else? You've got a minute on the clock. <laughs> Well, this, this was a kind of a no-brainer here. Uh, it's the B, my wife, and Michael Valley. We're, we're all kind of uh, collaborating on this together. So Michael Valley was the one that actually came up with the idea um, for this. He reached out to me and was like, hey, he, he drew his little sketch. Oh, fun fact. Yeah, he drew a little sketch, sent it to me, and was like, "Hey, what if I put my ape character here? You, you be the the guy driving, and and there's bats in the background, and it's kind of like it was a cool idea. And we decided, let's go with it. Let's go. Let's make it. And yeah, so the the art done by my wife and the, the little ape guy is done by Michael Valley. And yeah, we brought the idea to life, and hope to share it with the community here. This is something fun. I, I think you know, you know people in my college you can wear and it's kind of like a, if you know you know kind of thing. You know. I didn't. I was gonna put it on tonight with the bow tie, but you know, a bow tie is doesn't work with t-shirts too well. That's okay. So, when can we get this shirt? Uh, right now, Michael Valley is offering it on his shop on Etsy. There's a limited number of shirts that's available for this collaboration. So once they go out, that that's kind of it. They, just, they, get, they get sold out. We brought a limited number of shirts available. And uh, right now they're on Michael Valley shop and they'll be available on my shop as well once my shop opens up here next week. So on the 15th is when the shop opens up for pgtmycology.com and you can grab yourself a, a shirt over there once the, the shop opens. So definitely need to act fast. No time to waste. Did it, Michael Valley also made the ape plushie? Are those available in mass or no? 
Uh, he sold out of them in the past. I'm not sure if he still has it I did, available I forgot to ask moment. him about it, so if he's watching, let us know. Is 90 going to buy the shirt too? I do have a shirt, but they're very cool. I might have to buy 90 more of them, but we'll see. Yeah, it looks like the A plushie is still available. I just checked his uh, store. Awesome, there. so you get the A plushie along with this shirt, and you're just, you're just aping out, having a nice trip. Just be careful when you eat your apes, everybody, because a lot of people underestimate them. They're like, ah, whatever, you know, it's just, it's just cubensis, but. So. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. So tier one, two questions down, passed both of them. Got them right. Got one more question in tier one. So I think that's your only choice. Are you ready? We're going to go with it. Let's go. All right. Here we go. All right. What is the study of fungi called? Is it A, mushroomology, B, mycology, C, fungiology, or D, fungi physics? You've got a minute on the clock. Oh, man. I really wish the answer was <laughs> fungi physics. That just sounds so, so, it's fine, see. I don't know. Uh, the, the answer is B, mycology. Everything else sounds cool. I would Final say answer? Okay. But B, mycology is All the study right. of fungi. We're going to go with B, mycology. Here we go. You are correct. You have passed tier one. This is amazing. So let's take a minute. I'm going to look through the chat real quick. What's going on in the chat? Yeah, um, a minute might be too long for sure. We're still just, still just a second pilot episode. Rai SM said I got one of those magnets. They're super legit. I think he means, or I think they mean the, the Michael Valley magnet with the pins in it. Oh yeah, I've seen those magnets. He came out. The, the lid pops off of that. Yeah. Some it's a pretty dope idea. S.A. Potter said, I bought two shirts that came in spawn bags. Yeah, you got to keep it going. Just like um, moonshiners gift each other stuff in mason jars. <laughs> Smoke and Joe said, lick the like button. I agree. So let's get going with tier number two. Are you ready for your next question? Which PGT deer should we go for in tier two? That's the very tough choice. We shall go with the okay PGT. All right, I agree. Here we go. Ooh, question. Where does the contamination show up in this image? Is it A, nowhere because it's all healthy mycelium? B, the right side? C, the left side? D. You are effed because it's everywhere. This could be tough for a few people who are, who are brand new. I know, right? Eventually it would be everywhere once you leave it to go long enough. Uh, but yeah, this, 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 this one here, the contamination is on the left side. I mean, it's a, this is a picture of one of my plates. So. Yeah, sure. <laughs> final answer I'm sure okay let's see I agree it's the left side you don't want any of that nasty crap what you want to do is take a transfer from the leading edge on the right hand side some of that rhizomorphic mycelium and transfer that to a new plate farthest away from the contamination they're running away from the contamination that's what's happening there you can kind of see where that line spits them up too. It's kind of where the transfer is, and, and all the growth that's around the contam is all suppressed in. Whereas the other side is like free reign. It's very rare where you'll see people let the contamination go, and the mycelium will kind of eat it. But whatever this contamination is, can't tell by looking at it. I'm not that professional. The mycelium wants no part of it. All right, no. so. 
pass the first question in tier number two. What should we go for next? Hmm. Very I'll let you pick this one, 90. Okay. Oh, well, you got, I'm gonna... you got two choices there. Which one do you <laughs> I'm like I'm going to have to give you the heart eyes PGT here at the bottom. Which country is the top exporter of fresh or chilled mushrooms in 2019? Is it A, Canada, B, China, C, Poland, or D, the USA? Ah. Which country is the top exporter? This one threw me off. Fresh I wonder. Chilled mushrooms. Oh, look at the chat. This one threw me off. Yeah. You, you want to think of China. Right. China's the biggest population to oh, me. Forgot to start the timer. Now you've got 60 seconds on the clock. I mean, I don't, I don't think Canada is, is that big into mushrooms. And USA. I know Kenneth Square is the, the mushroom capital of the United States. I think like a, a big chunk of all the mushrooms that get shipped around are grown in Kenneth Square. Uh, Very, it threw me off. I'm, go, I'm just going through the chat right here. I love seeing what everybody's saying. <laughs> Michael Geeky said, my dad knows the answer to this one. So what does he say, Michael Geeky? What does PGT think? I'm thinking it's China. <laughs> Is that your final answer? <laughs> or the <laughs> USA. Which one? Which one? Which one? Uh, I'm going to take a stab at it and say it's China. Okay, China, final answer. Here we go, China. Oh! It's Poland. Poland. They exported the mushrooms from Poland. So let's fun see this fun. Say. Yeah, let's see the fun fact. So, production team, aka PGT's wife. It's a trick question because it threw me off too. Everyone's gonna think China with everything going on. And this is from the article: Top mushroom importing and exporting countries from BigManBusiness.com. Export in China accounts for less than 5% of its total domestic production, and about half of it is to Asian countries. Considering that 95% of mushroom production in China is consumed locally. From the outside, China is the largest exporter of processed mushrooms, but in 2019, Poland is the largest exporter of fresh and chilled mushrooms. Ah! Which, it's interesting to think about because if I go to um, one of the international food places near me, they, ha they sell fresh mushrooms, but they also have a bunch of dried, dehydrated mushrooms, like black fungus, um, shiitake, a bunch of other stuff. I so yeah, to the Asian grocery store. They got a whole aisle dedicated to dried fungus. Yeah, herbs, that's what it is. It's a whole stuff. aisle. I actually came across dried cordyceps in those Asian grocery stores. It was very interesting. They looked like Cheetos on, on the shelf in a bag. I picked it up. Oh, snap, dried cordyceps. But you get dried lines mean too. But yeah, so that's kind of why I think it's China, because they, they have so much. But, right. Yeah. And that's what it says, but is yeah, China is the largest... China is the largest exporter of processed mushrooms, which is what that's considered, all the dried, salted mushrooms. Very yeah. interesting fact. Threw everybody off. I love it. So yeah, Michael Geeky came through in the chat. Shouted out Poland. Michael Suave Yo. said surprised. Microwave Mycology said y'all rock. <laughs> Two bullcrap said I smell hippies. <laughs> 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 okay, right, so, so what do we do here? I got the question wrong. <laughs> question wrong um you're done thanks for participating and have a good night um you win a participation pack 
So give us your address right now live on the stream. No, I'm just kidding. In a real world event, when we start having contestants here, we're going to have you go through each tier. So as you pass tier one, you can move on to tier two, tier three, tier four. The goal is to pass all four tiers. And if you get one wrong, unfortunately that's it. And then we're gonna randomize the question so that the next contestant can't just come on and know the answers to everything that's happened. So if you do get one wrong, we are going to put together participation packs. And that's where the donations come in, where right now the only monetization option we have is through Streamlabs, which the link is at the top of the description. It's streamlabs.com slash show slash tip. So since this is just a second pilot episode, we will continue going for the love of the live stream. And we do have an announcement at the end. So stay tuned to the end of the game show because there is another special announcement that everyone's going to like. I'm excited. Do I know yes. about this announcement? You know what it is. It involves chatting with people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, we can... Continue. Uh, let's go with the 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 cutesy PGT, the the kawaii PGT. All right, the last one in tier two. Here we go. What is the name of the fungus that has been used to develop the first ever biodegradable packaging material? Is it A. Mycobond, B. Ecomycelium, C. Fungi wrap, or D. Bio shroom. Hmm. Looks like styrofoam, isn't it? I uh, yeah. I uh, yeah. There's a fun fact coming up with this. That's really cool. Ah. Uh. Eco mycelium, fungi wrap, or bio shroom. I think. I wouldn't think it was bio shroom. I think the. Bio mushroom sounds boring like it, but I don't know about bio shroom. Uh, it does make Michael sense. Bond sounds good. When I Eco first... mycelium sounds like it could be it. Let's see what the chat thinks. <laughs> if I click away from the PowerPoint, the timer kind of stops, but that's all right. It's just a second pilot test episode. Yeah. Invader Kush says, uh... B, I heard about the plastic one back in like 2010. Oh. I'm going to go with Ecomycelium. You're, you're going to go with B, Ecomycelium? That, that, that sounds like a, the economy choice. Final answer. Here we go. Oh, it's wrong. It's Mycobond. What? So here's the fun fact. This is from the article Packaging the Future Amazing Mushroom Packaging by Diane Pham from Inhabitat.com. Ecovative Design in New York has used mushrooms to create a heat and fire resistant, energy absorbing, biodegradable, even anaerobically without oxygen, and low energy material called Mycobond. It can be made in all shapes and thicknesses depending on its use, and it can replace unsustainable environmentally persistent foam packaging in almost every application that is it's currently used for. So think about electronic stuff, insulation, or even panels on cars and vehicles. And this was the other fun fact is that IKEA has started to replace the styrofoam with the mushroom-based packaging. And it makes you think, you why isn't that? that? What? Not yet, Usually, no. Usually, like, my ear stuff has all, like, wood and, and Right, hardware. I don't... Yeah, I didn't... No. I just bought a couple things from Ikea a little bit ago, and they didn't have any styrofoam in there. Or the Michael Bond. I think they should call it Michael Foam. <laughs> That's what it right? Looks like. Yeah, that Michael would make... Foam. Yeah. Then, then it's kind of similar to Microphone, doesn't it? That's, that question threw me they, off, too, if you they, didn't read the they, article. Maybe that's why they picked Michael Bond. Um, yeah, so just to remind everybody, we're going to update the description after this live stream to have these article links so you can go back and kind of read through them. They're very interesting um, for these fun facts that we have during these questions. All right, so tier one and two, we made it through. We've got two more tiers. 
Now tier tier three, we're getting you know it's, it's kind of increasing in difficulty here. Yeah, PGT looks like he's unsure. <laughs> he's very quizzical. But the last one, the last one, he's just kind of creepy there. I agree. Should we go with that one? Yeah, let's go with the creepy one. It's, it's, it stands out to me, and if it doesn't work out, then the other PGTs are unsure. <laughs> All right, so here we go. What is the botanical name of this mushroom shown in the picture? Is it A, Hemogoblinus fungorum, B, Vampyromectum sanguinium, C, Hydenellum pecci, or D, Hydenellum true blood? Goblin Fungorum. A? B. B? It looks like a vampire mushroom. C D. I agree. But I've come across I've come across this mushroom. There's a, there's a couple of pictures of a different picture I came across of it. It looked like a strawberry. And uh, it's like bleeding out like that. Did you uh, touch it? This one I know. This is uh Hy Hydella Pecky. This is something that, like, if you just come across it, you kind of learn about it a little bit, then you kind of know, but, like, yeah, the other... The, the name kind of throws you off a little bit. But it's C, Hydenellum Pecky. All right, final answer, C. But did you touch it when you came across it? I wish I can come across this in real life. I have oh. not come across oh, it. Oh, you meant you just ca you came across it just, like, in, in your research? Came across it browsing Instagram. <laughs> oh, okay. So, see, you were correct. Let's check out this fun fact provided by the production team for the Michael Game Show. From the article, Hydenellum Pecky from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. This mushroom has many common names strawberries and cream, the bleeding Hydenellum, the bleeding tooth fungus, the red juice tooth, and the devil's tooth. Oh, take a minute. Furious Panda donated five dollars to the Myco Game Show, and now. Thank you, Furious Panda. Appreciate that very much. Your first donator for the Myco Game Show. Your first, first official donator. First and top donator. If you see right above the goal, right there, we've got our list. It's a little cut off, and Streamlabs isn't letting me move it right now. But you, you understand what that means. So it's not poisonous, but they are not particularly edible due to their foul taste, which some say it's so bitter that it's just inedible. A YouTuber fascinated by fungi has posted a taste test video of this mushroom. Go and check it out after the stream. Oh well, yeah, I come across this guy. He, he's um, the one who touches yeah, just... everything and flicks it and rubs it. Is that the guy? Uh, yeah. Ah. Yeah. The witch, he witch fungus, it, he's like he jiggling it and it's wet. Did you lick that 90? Uh, it says it's edible. I would do it for the gram, maybe. I don't know. What if I give you like 10 Uncle Ben bags? Okay. 10 Savvy Fairs. <laughs> <laughs> 10 Uncle Ben bags for you to lick that mushroom? I'll do it. Free rice. Can't, can't complain about free rice. All right, so that was that was a pretty cool question. We got two more here in tier number three. Uh, let's go with PGT pointing his fingers together. Very inquisitive. <laughs> let's see. Ooh, what mushroom is named after SpongeBob? A, the Krabby Patty fungus. <laughs> B, Spongiforma square pantsy. C, Squidward's shrooms, or D, <laughs> Fungi Square Pants. <laughs> oh, I like Fungi Square Pants. I feel like I have to, someone's gonna grab that name and make us Fungi Square Pants. This reminds me of the Paul Stamets question from the last, from the first episode. <laughs> I know. I, I, all of this doesn't sound mushroomy except for. B, spongy forma square pantsy. All right, let's go with B. You are correct. I mean, it wouldn't be Squidward shrooms. It wouldn't be Krabby Patty fungus. They're not named after SpongeBob. It's very interesting. It looks cool. 
Yeah, it looks like a sponge, right? Like one of those sea sponges. Yeah. But it's actually right. a mushroom. One more in tier three. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I don't think that PGT emoji is ready though. Very, very. It's also kind of inquisitive. But let's see. What kind let's of do emotion it. Do you think that that would, that would come from that? Oh, Ryzen just donated ten dollars to the stream, and is now the show's top donor. Well, thank you, Ryzen. Thank you for your donation. Shout out to Ryzen. Let me just take a minute to fix this donation text. <clears throat> because we do it live. Doing it live. Do it live. I was wondering what was going on. All I'm right. Like the best around on this thing, so I think it's pretty neat. So we're back in it. We've raised fifteen dollars on this stream, going right back into the stream for the Myco Game Show. Shout out to the two donors so far. All right. What mushroom tastes like maple syrup? Is it A, the candy cap mushroom? B, the French toast fungus? C, buttery button, or D, the honeycomb chanterelle. Ooh, honeycomb chanterelle sounds very really nice. French toast fungus, buttery button, candy cap mushroom. These all sound very delicious. They do. They sound like candy. <clears throat> oh, someone should totally make a French toast fungus. I mean, wouldn't that be like an omelette with, with mushrooms on it? Could be. No, but you need bread. Be. You need bread on there. Michael Valley just donated to the show. Shout out to Michael Valley. Oh, shout out Michael Valley. Oh, that's so nice of him to do that. Shout out Michael Valley. Uh, I'm going to go with Honeycomb Chanterelle. That sounds like a, a, a possible mushroom there. Honeycomb Chanterelle. Let's see. Wrong. It's just a simple candy cap mushroom. So let's check candy out the fun fact. We're going to learn more about candy cap. This is from the article Guide to Candy Caps, the Maple Syrup Mushroom by Jenny from MushroomAppreciation.com. Candy cap powder is used in many desserts, including cookies, ice cream, pancakes, breads, custards, puddings, and cakes. They can also be a sweet offset for a savory dish like an accomp accompaniment can't say that right now for a smoked or barbecued dish. And the best way to get the most out of the dried or powdered cap is to steep it in a warm liquid like almond milk. And the production team lets us know that we should get some. Maybe make a video about it. Grow it out of some Uncle Ben bags. See how it really tastes. You can actually grow that. It would be interesting if you can grow candy cap mushrooms. Yeah, I wonder. We gotta see what the substrate's about. Abu Peter Stow just donated to the show. Thank you so much. Oh. Uh, Mushy Art, let us know, which is PGT's wife in the chat. The dry candy cap mushroom is sold online. Where do these people find these dried candy cap mushrooms? That's what I want to know. At the forage for them? Yeah, I wonder if somebody, somebody found it out in the wild and ate it, and they're like, oh, well, I didn't die, and it tasted like candy. Oh. I'm kind of curious about this now. Yeah, I'm, we got to make a note on that one. Candy cap mushroom. All right, so we you made it through three tiers. We are now on the final tier. Tier four. Well, that's the How are you feeling? One. Feeling pretty good. I feel like uh, the first emoji there. I'm like sweating. 
buckets here. I guess yeah, I got a couple this rock. Is rough. Yeah. Let's go with that one. All right, let's let's sweat it out. <laughs> no, sweat it out. The other one, he's like puking or he's just angry. <laughs> All right, so which of the following is not part of amatoxin? A subgroup of toxic compounds found in the poisonous mushrooms like amanita. Is it A, alpha am amanitin, or B, beta amanitin, or C, pro amanulin, or D, oh my god, they're all amatoxins, which should worry us because you never know where they're lurking, where they're hiding. That's why you have to be careful and practice common sense. Amatoxins. Hmm. I would say they're all amatoxins. Oh, you think they're all amatoxins? Let's see. I would agree with that. Let's see what the chat says. <laughs> Ginger Gnome said, no clue, but I'd go D. Lot, we have a few Ds in the chat. I think we're going to... We're going to go with your answer, D. And that's correct. These are all amatoxins. Let's check out our fun fact. This is from the article, Amatoxin Mushroom Tox Toxicity by B. Zane Horowitz, Michael J. Moss from the National Library of Medicine. Amanita poisoning occurs because most people are not able to tell which mushroom species are safe for consumption when foraging. Also, certain people seek psychotropic mushrooms to get a high, but mistakenly ingest Amanita mushrooms. The first stage does not begin until 6 to 12 hours after ingestion. ingestion. Often foragers comment on how good the food made from Amanita species tastes, and there are no signs of a problem for at least 6 hours. It takes about 24 hours before any signs or laboratory indicators of liver injury begin to appear. Symptoms like nausea, stomach cramps, vomiting, diarrhea, and then death can occur in three to seven days. Um, I believe those white mushrooms that people see pop up in their lawn sometimes are in the Amanita family, the death caps, skull caps. Those are very dangerous. That's uh, yeah, they're called the uh, the white angel. Oh yeah, yeah. Like right? Cooped up, Michael just donated to the show. Shout out to Cooped Up Michael. He's out there, or they're out there cooped up. Well, this someone says the death cap mushroom. There you go. That's the there, one. yeah, you know. So that's your it'll wife. Kill you right it. away. <laughs> it'll kill you slowly across a week. That kind of sucks to, to, to die that way. I think, yeah, Michael Suave said Destroying Angel. I think they're along those same... They pop up, they're white, they kind of look like Amanita Muscaria, but without the red, they're just white. Hi-Fi donated to the show. Shout out to Hi-Fi. Slowly getting Double up to mushrooms. our goal. Thank you, Hi-Fi, for their donation. We appreciate it. Shout out to everybody who has donated tonight towards our goal for this show. Definitely goes right back into the show. All right, so two more questions left. This is very interesting. These have been great questions so far. And remember that in future game shows, we're, we're, we're thinking about switching it up. It might not always be a Q&A or multiple choice. It might be something completely different. And I think that is something that we're going to let the contestants know ahead of time once we enable sign-ups. Is, hey, you're signing up for this show, and it's going to be this or that. So this is, again, the second pilot episode of the Michael Game Show. I'm hosting tonight, 92nd Mycology, and over there is Philly Golden Teacher. Nice little cat tonight. Yes, if you guys have any ideas or suggestions for the Michael Game Show, feel free to put them in the comments as well. Uh, I mean, you guys might be able to come up with something crazy that I think, you know, might make the game show fun. We'd be open to, to trying out the idea and, you know, giving you credit for it too, just for, for, you know, putting it out there. Um, some idea that I had, maybe like a, a Wheel of Fortune, like a hangman type of thing with Mycology, I think it would be fun. I mean, 
if there's something else we can do, feel free to, to chime it in the chat. So tip of the cap, just donated to the show. Shout out to tip of the cap. Oh, thanks, Tim. Appreciate your donation there. Ikichi Onizuka said, "Stop the background noise. Uh, like what? The um, the music? What is it too loud? Uh, that's the only complaint I've seen." Um, the fungi spore said, "You should make a subreddit where you pick people to be on it. Then you should try Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune or something like that. Definitely things we have been thinking about." Yeah, Silly Cyber awesome donated to the show. Oh, thank you, Silly Cyber, for your donation. Yeah, I so think yeah, one of the of... ideas we like to have is to get multiple contestants on to compete against each other as well. That, that, yes. would, that would be very interesting. That is one of the main goals for sure. Um, okay, so two questions left. You've got the pissed off PGT and the puking PGT. Well, how do you feel right uh, now? Are you pissed or are you puking? <laughs> well, after ingesting amatoxins, I would imagine I'd be puking. Yeah, after that alpha amatoxin, amanita. All right, PGT is going to puke. Let's see. Yep, we're going <laughs> for pukey PGT. Oh, here we go. Which of the following is a type of fungus that is used to make the Japanese popular rice wine sake? Is it A. Fusarium venenatum B. Rhizopus oligosporus C. Saccharomyces cerevisiae Huh? Yeah. Or is it D. Aspergillus oryzae Very interesting. <laughs> oh my god, it's, it's, it's awesome to see you try to pronounce these, and I cannot pronounce these. I know, right? It's, I love this. Uh, yeah, I, 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 this one just, just took me by complete blank here. Let's, let's very do a 50 50 here. We're gonna, we're gonna use a 50 50 here because I, I don't know any of this. All right, let's go with the 50-50. Let's take 50% of the questions or answers away. So now we're left with either C or D. I see lots of oh. lots of C's in the chat, a couple D's. Saccharomyces cerevisiae or Aspergillus oryzae? Ah... Uh. They Aspergillus Arise? Because I have no idea. He says D. Is. Let's go. That was correct. You got it. Awesome. Aspergillus Arise is the fungus that's used to make the rice wine sake. Very, very delicious. Very yummy. All I right. did not know you need a fungus to make sake i mean i thought it's just rice right to make sake i thought you, you, I, need a, you need fungus to make sake maybe it breaks and ferments the rice kind of like if you leave an uncle ben bag colonized too long it just turns to mush because the mycelium fermented it all hmm. and then we could just drink that juice when you smell that sour rice i think that's it's being turned into sake like like when you let fruit ferment turns into alcohol so maybe so it's basically mold then all right S something like that could be <laughs> yeah <laughs> mushy art can you get drunk from expired uncle ben i don't know so we have one question left this is the pissed off pgt because this could be the hardest question of them all all the way in tier four right at the bottom of tier four this could be the hardest question of the whole show so far are you ready? All right, we'll pick the piss off PGT. All right. Here we go. Ooh. Which is the species of fungus which is used in the production of antibiotics? This is very, very hard. A. Psilocybe cubensis. B. Agaricus bisporus. C. Penicillum notatum. D. Ganoderma, Ganoderma lucidum. Now I understand why he's pissed off. 
Uh, the chat, this is, this is... the chat is flooded. <laughs> I know, right? This is this is this is it's... a good one. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's got, it kind of belongs in a, a lower tier, in my opinion. I agree. That's why I said wow. it's very hard. <laughs> That's why PGT is pissed off. It's a no-brainer. It's so hard. You know what? I'll give four. you the 50-50 for free. Let's just be sure here. <laughs> yeah, it's penicillin. I mean, that, that's, All right, that's, penicillin. That's... Let's see. That's correct. Let's check out the fun fact. So this is from the article, How Was Penicillin Developed? From sciencemuseum.org.uk. In 1928, Dr. Alexander Fleming returned from a holiday to find mold growing on a petri dish of Staphylococcus bacteria. He noticed the mold nice. seemed to Yeah. He noticed the mold seemed to be preventing the bacteria around it from growing. He soon identified that the mold produced a self-defense chemical that could kill bacteria. He named the substance penicillin. And yeah, I saw somebody in the chat who was that allergic. They're allergic to it. Uh, Invader Kush said the answer is C. I'm allergic to it. I'm so allergic to it. You got it. We made it all the way to the ending page of the game show. And oh, Ryzen donated another ten dollars to this show tonight. Very oh, close to our goal. Very close Thank to you our goal. Again, Um, let's see, yeah. Ikichi Onizuka said that helped save so many soldiers' lives back in the day. That's right. So, um, just like the first pilot episode, we'll take a little break. We'll go to intermission, and then we'll come back and kind of hang out and do a Q&A. And see what you guys think about how the Michael Game Show is going so far. Um, get, get back into more suggestions and everything. And we'll see, we'll see what the future holds. So... We'll be right back after the short intermission.
We are back, and it looked like Rhizom donated another. Okay, no, that was an old, but still, shout out to Rhizom. Um, so, right before the break, well, not right before the break, a little bit into the show, I said there's going to be a little bit of an announcement, a big announcement. Oh, wait, we have to, we have to wait for Invader Kush because they're making a sandwich. So we're going to stop the whole show for Invader Kush. Ah, very important to get your sandwich ready for Q&A time. All right, so anyway, we're back. The big announcement is PGT has just updated this live stream's description with the official Myco Game Show Discord server link. You can now join the Myco Game Show Discord server. Um, it's still in the early stages. That's just in one more place for everyone to hang out until we um, get move forward with moving contestants into the show and into the stream so the Michael game show discord server is now available to join if you refresh the live page it'll pop up in the description the discord um, invite link yeah and with the discord link uh, more information will be posted on there if you're interested in becoming a contestant on the Michael game show uh, that's where we're going to filter in contestants from. And same if you guys are a vendor and you're looking to sponsor the Michael Game Show, we will have uh, information uh, on there to let you know how you can you know, apply to become a sponsor or a contestant for the Michael Game Show. We have Fly on the Wall sent the first message. Furious Panda is now in the chat on the Discord server. Thank you so much, Furious Panda. You're, you're the first person that donated and one of the first few that joined the server here. Cooped Up Myco just donated again to this sh st the stream tonight. This is very awesome. We thank everybody who has contributed so far. Thank you, Cooped Up Myco. I see you there. Shout out to you, bro. Um... Yeah, this is very awesome. I'm just watching the Discord server populate. I know we got fans jumping in already. Yep. So, um, we wanted to end the show just like the last one with a little bit of a Q&A, hanging out with the chat. So, if anybody has any questions, we are tuned into the chat right now. Now's the time. What is what is every what's on everybody's mind? Yes, are there geographical restrictions on contestants? No, there's no geographical restrictions. Um, well, I guess it depends. Uh, that's something we're working on because the prizes. If you do win the prize, um, we're still working on shipment. Um, is it going to be drop shipped from the sponsor? If it's a care pack from us, you know. Um, if it's ridiculous, like you're out in Alibaba land, um, might have to cover shipping for the VAT taxes and everything. Yeah, I think we might have like a international show where we would have prizes that are easily sent out to contestants from international. I think majority of the sponsor prizes going forward is kind of aimed at the uh, United States community that's where we're located and that's where a lot of the vendors that are, that are interested in sponsoring will be located so it's just easier for them to ship stuff out uh, domestically here but that doesn't mean that we you know don't want to leave out the international people we definitely uh, have a show catered to them because uh, we want everyone to have a chance to, to participate and have fun in the show I agree. So again, this is all in the very early stages. Just want to keep reminding everybody of that. Um, Rachel A said, "Sadly, I missed the game show. Any idea when the next one will be?" Well, this is going to be up to for to rewatch, just like the first episode. And we're kind of playing it by ear on when the next game show is going to be and how we're going to play it out. If it's going to be another multiple choice, if we're going to bring on another um, 
contestant, maybe not a random fan, but you know, somebody somebody within the community. Rob Champ just donated to the show. We are ten dollars away from this show's goal of one hundred doll hairs. We appreciate you making us uh, one step closer towards reaching our donation goal tonight. We appreciate it. And that goes right back into the show for future awesome stuff. Um, because again, the, the YouTube channel is not monetized yet, so this little bit helps through the Streamlabs tip link. And the more you watch, the more you share the Myco Game Show channel, the more views and everything that happens, the the more we'll be able to spread the word on this. So, um, I saw a question here. Oh, yeah, Invader Kush had this question. It said, a buddy of mine gifted me some LC that had active charcoal in it. Is it normal for it to turn everything black in the grain spawn? I'm a noob. I, I've never used LC with charcoal in it. Yeah, I, I don't know why you would want to do, do put charcoal in, in LC. Could it have just been a spore syringe and there was spores in there? I don't know. That's very weird, especially to turn everything black. No, that's not right. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to, to know what you're working with when you're shooting black liquid into your bag. It's going to be black. You're shooting ash into the, the bag, so it's going to be black. Um... But I mean, that, that doesn't mean that it won't work, but you probably just gotta test it out on agar and see if it comes up clean or not. If it's sterile and then it's growing, then it's similar to like black agar in a way. But it's just harder to tell, you just gotta test. It should test be black. With, with, yeah, it or shouldn't be black. Or the spawn, yeah. Normal LC, having it more, more like clear is, you, you can easier tell when you have mycelium in there. Uh, Michael Valley wants to remind everybody that Michael Valley ships worldwide. So, yes, if you want to get one of the shirts and an ape plushie and you're out there in Egypt, it's going to happen. Shout out to Michael Valley. Going that extra mile, making sure you guys are getting point. awesome micro products worldwide. Michael Geeky donated $10 to this and he finished off the goal. We hit the goal for tonight, 100 doll hairs, for the second pilot episode of the Myco Game Show. Thank you, Thank Myco you, Geeky. Geeky. All the support Love that we you. give each other. Thank you, Geeky, for helping us hit the goal. This goes down in history, completed, Myco you Geeky. Completed, you completed our night. So, yeah. Just other people confirming that doesn't sound right about the uh, charcoal uh, LC. Microwave Mycology said, At Michael Valley, just got you and PGT's collab shirt. Super excited. Um, yeah, Water Kills Fish said, Countdown music would be good when a question is being asked to add tension. Yeah, that is. We're playing with something called the, the meme board uh, with Streamlabs to put in some sound effects. Water kills Michael fish Geeky, as well. oh, up there pressure cooking your grain jars do they last before drying out? Uh, that's a good question right there. I get that question quite a bit um, on my community as well. Um, so after you pressure cook your grains, uh, they can last quite a while on the shelf uh, after being inoculated. I've had bags last up to a month before I inoculated them, and they will still take off. Uh, a lot of things. It's good to test your bags if you want to test if your bags or jars are contaminated uh, and make sure your sterilization process is good. Uh, leave your jars out for like a week or two after they've been cooked and you will know if they're clean or not um, You know, within that time span. If everything is clean, you, you, your tech is good and you're good to go. So it, it takes a while for them to dry out. Um, but I've had success with grains. It depends on how well they were hydrated before being cooked. But they, they will last over a month before you need to inoculate them. I haven't oh, yeah, gone I... to try and like, leave stuff out longer. <laughs> it might be something I might try and experiment one of these days, see how long I can leave grains out and inoculate and see if they'll work. It'll be a pretty cool project. Very, very time consuming, but I think in the name of mycology and science, it's, it's worth uh, 
worth it to find out. You know, go to the extent. Because a lot of people want to know. The great man just donated to the show. We are over our goal now. This is amazing. Thank you, everybody. And I agree with the jars. Um, when you're sterilizing stuff, it's just like canning food. So even though we have like filter patches and stuff on the jar lids or the bags, it should technically be sterile, just like you canned sterile food. So it should actually last, you know, years before you put anything in there. Yeah, that's a good point. You do make a good point there. Going through the chat here. Here we go, Jordan Jellison. I recently inoculated Uncle Ben's with some penis NV6 spores. When it was time to broken choke, one of the bags had individual grains that were completely black. Yeah, is there a contam that acts like that? Yeah, black mold. Um, but if you, it's so okay, it, were you using just plain whole grain brown rice? If there's black grains, that's not good. That means there was some contamination up there by your gas exchange. Because if you did the break and shake and you brought the black down to the view window, that means it contaminated up there at your gas exchange. And Michael Geeky has a great point. I'm always hopping into Michael Geeky's um, podcast live streams. We currently have 89 watchers, $1 each, and we could double the goal. That's very true. I hop into Michael Geeky's podcast and let him know, hey, there's 200 viewers, a dollar from everybody. Imagine how much support that goes to the Michael Geeky podcast. So the fungi spore said, what budget pressure cooker or canner do you recommend? To this day, I still just have the 16 quart Presto that you find in the Walmart canning preservation aisle. It works fine. Oh, I forgot about that, John. The, the 16 quart ones. Yeah, that yeah, one. they they hold they hold seven jars in there and they work great. Yeah. If you upgrade to the 23 quart press those, you can hold 10 jars in there. Yeah, the 16 uh, quart then, is like 70 something at Walmart, 70, maybe 78. 70 that's how much the 23 quart press those used to cost from the middle after the pandemic. <laughs> Um, another one I would recommend uh, is, well, you can use it. I, I would recommend the Presto over it, but the Mural 22 quart pressure cooker works well. That's something I, I still run to this day as well. I still use that pressure cooker. Um, it just it don't have a gauge on it, so you can't tell when it's at 15 on the gauge, but it'll start you know whistling when it's at 15 using the weight. And um, I guess if someone new is starting out, uh, when I first started out, before I even bought a pressure cooker, I actually used my Instapot. So with the Instapot, uh, I did, um, I believe I did around 120 minutes in the Instapot in little pint jars, but I was doing BRF flour cakes in those. But that's how I started out. Um, without the pressure cooker I just use my Instapot and the Lots only downside with the Instapot those. is you, you can't fit quart jars in there <laughs> that's the only downside I don't like about the uh, Instapot but if you're willing to, to just downgrade to like pint sized jars uh, the Instapot works great as well to, to sterilize so Chaotic Shaman is in the chat he donated to the show tonight we are $20 over our goal. This is amazing for everybody who's here and for all of us. Thank you, Chaotic Shaman. A wild wavy cap appeared asked, have you ever used worm castings for dung lovers? That's one of the ones, that's something I still haven't played with yet, personally. I haven't used worm castings for dung lovers, but I have grown dung lovers in CVG. So they don't necessarily fire dung so that's a tip for you guys that are interested in those yeah dibble dibble runs his stuff in the instapot too 
Yeah, because it doesn't reach 15 PSI, it only reaches like 12 or 13 PSI. You have to just leave it in there to sterilize longer to reach full sterilization. Lion wise BRF flower cakes, yes, brown rice flour. Yeah, it's, this, it's the PF tech, that's kind of where I started out cultivation journey with. I'm just reminding everybody we're on a Q&A if they just showed up. Just pulled up a random okay. Google and a uh, Google image. Rachel A asked, do either of y'all have a favorite gourmet mushroom to grow? What's yours, 90? Um, I always love to grow those chestnuts with that spiky armor on them because they look so cool. Other than that, it's always Pio Pino. That people know that's my favorite because it looks just like golden teacher mushrooms. It does. <laughs> my favorite gourmet mushroom to grow is pink oyster. Something about pink oyster is there's no other mushroom that you can grow easily that is pink. That's one of the reasons why I like it. It's just so exotic looking and stands out. And pink oysters make for, if you like um, harvest them and you fry them up, they're almost like, um, I don't know, their texture is very like crispy. It's kind of almost like bacon like the pink oysters. That's my favorite uh, gourmet mushroom to grow. And they, they taste great. Chef Mike just donated $10 to the stream. That put us $30 you, over our goal. So shout out to everybody who has donated to the show tonight. Okay, let's see. Yeah, you know, pink oysters, they do well in hot environments. And I think a lot more people need to grow those. Because not everybody can cool down a room to fruit mushrooms. Yeah, it's a little hard to do that. I've always had this idea to cool down a tent by throwing like ice in the humidifier system for the tent. I wonder if that cools down the tent by just blowing like cold, humid air into the tent, right? Ginger Gnome just donated to the show tonight. We are now $35 over our goal. Thank you, Ginger Gnome, for your donation. The support is overwhelming. This is the future of this is going to be awesome. Oh gosh, we've got more more donations coming in. Michael oh, Geeky, Michael Geeky. ten dollar. Amazing support. This is this is awesome, guys. Can't wait for the future of this game show. I'm glad that everyone is enjoying it so far. Big Blue donated. Love you boys so much. Tommy Brasco said, my buddy just called, he's got fungus gnats. What do you guys recommend? Have you dealt with this, 90? Still, nope, I still do not have that problem. Even being in Florida, I don't have fungus gnats. I don't know where they're coming from for people. I haven't had fungus gnats, but I've had gnats, like flies, fruit flies, that invade my stuff. And for me, it happens more often in the summertime now that the weather is warm. And my tip for that is um, just prevent the fruit flies. So if you got like bananas standing out or something like that on the stand, that's that's kind of where they, they, they're attracted to. Or if you've got trash, clean up your trash, trash can. Don't leave stuff in there, it smells and you get flies around there. And when you get flies around there, they, they start flying around your house and they, they find your, your girls and they, they go in there, lay eggs, and then you got like a bunch more in there. And for me, I've had them in the past, but since I dealt with them in tubs, they're kind of isolated. And one of my tubs, I, I had a crack in the tub and it's how they got in. And they're, they're, if you just kind of let them go, they, they start multiplying in there like crazy. So if you do spot them, do some cleaning. Another thing I would put out is those um, vinegar and dish soap. If you put like some warm water, some vinegar and some dish soap in there and leave it in a jar. They get they, the flies fly in there and they, they kind of drown in that solution. So that that's helped. That's my tip for that. I saw um, if everybody remembers home mycology, one of his early videos for fungus gnats. He he wrapped his tub 
in those pantyhose liners, like that really fine mesh, and that kept the gnats out as well. And it was still able to breathe, obviously. I remember that too, one of home Mike's video, he's just sitting in the garage showing us his tubs and all these gnats flying around and then he's trying to like pick them off and kill them one by one. I remember watching that back in the day. Yeah, it's vintage. Um, so I don't know. Nope, are we back? Here we go. I think we're back. Oh wow, that scared me. Are we back? Okay. Sorry about that. I, I think we're back. Yeah, we're back. Okay. So what else is going on Why in the there? chat? How's everybody doing? We're we're um, about an hour and a half into the stream tonight, and we are way over our donation goal for the show through the Streamlabs link because we're not monetized yet on YouTube. Oh, so, uh, one thing that you guys can help if you guys um, don't you know have money to donate to here, if you want to still help support us. Um, is to kind of help us reach the monetization goal on the channel and in order to require that we need 4,000 watch hours we're currently about 25% there for a little less than that so if you guys have time and you guys want to help with time instead of money you guys can put on the stream and just let it play you, you can kind of you know mute it as well if you want play it in the background help yeah. us accumulate some watch time and that'll help push the channel towards uh, monetization and you can support just by leaving the stream up and just playing it in the background so along the lines of that chaotic shamanism said the pgt voice is perfect for making lc jars so there you go throw it up in the background and, and let those watch hours accumulate yeah, you just rewatch the, the michael game show as you're doing your transfers so Dibble Mycology said, sadly, you guys, I have to bounce. I had a line of questions to ask, but in real life, it's pulling me away. Peace out, Dibble. I yeah, appreciate you showing up, Dibble, and supporting. I'm sure they are already gone, but if you come back to watch, shout out to you. Slinkadoo said, I use a fridge for my cordyceps. Everything else, I'm stuck with high temps. Yeah. Show A asks, have either of y'all grown Enigma? Not me yet. No. I've grown it out a couple times now. Uh, they, you treat them the same as any cube. The only difference with Enigma is they take longer to fruit. And what happens with Enigma, because they don't have spores, they don't have, stem, they don't have stems, they don't have caps, they just have like a blob fruiting body that comes out. Um, Enigma can fruit indefinitely until the substrate runs out of nutrients. So oftentimes, in my experience, I can let them go for like one and a half to two months after spawning before I grab them. Yeah, so when people, uh, when Enigma first kind of hit the scene, people were selling swabs and it's like, the only thing those swabs have is just tissue on it. I think that's the only way that it was being spread until people just straight up put liquid culture out there. Or you come across a plate. I was gifted a plate of Enigma. Yeah, plate, yeah. That reminds me, I saw a question way early on. Sorry we we looked over it. It was, what do you, I think it was, what do you prefer, prints or swabs? And it's, I don't know, they, they, they each have their own place. You know, like you're not going to be able to get a print of Ape. You're only going to get a swab. So yeah. it kind of depends, depends. On, on, yeah. Overall, I like prints. But I know not everything will print, so that's the only downside. I like working with prints because you, you get a cool spore print. I mean, I think that's itself is a little piece of art that you have that the mushroom created. You know, it's pretty nice. And with the print, there's a lot of utility that comes with that print. You can turn it into a spore syringe. You can turn it into a spore solution, do some zero dilution with that. And I know you can also do that with swabs too. If you swab some spores onto it and your swab's sterile, you can drop it in solution and kind of pull it into the solution. Um, shout out to Edward Grant for that tip. He showed me that you can drop a clean swab after you swab the fruit into it. 
Uh-oh, it cut again. Uh, it, it should work. Oh, it's back, okay. Yeah, I always ah. thought, if you're gonna swab apes, just swab the apes and drop it into a solution, and there's your ape spore solution. Yeah, the only downside is, you know, you, you're risking um, possible contaminants in there if you're not sterile with it, so. Philip Claybon said, I have Enigma in Benz right now. Everything loves brown rice. Remember, PGT released the ultimate grain experiment video, and the spoiler alert is that brown rice came out the winner. So, yeah, drop a swab into what? Um, so, th th that's you drop a swab into a solution of sterile water, and you can essentially turn that swab into a spore syringe by shaking the spores off yeah, of the JC swab Cat. into the sterile water. JC Cat asked. That's what, um, that's what I said. Like, apes don't, you're not going to get a print off an ape. So, you swab it, drop it in some sterile water, and there's your ape spore solution. Um, Silly Cyburn said, I heard a tale that the creator of Enigma asked for it to never be sold. And that was why you saw so many people gifting it for a while. Yeah. And I remember Drew from Inoculate the World got, like, everyone got upset for Drew putting it on Inoculate the World. And, and nobody knew, like, he didn't understand why, but yeah, it's available now. Yeah, I think as, as stuff gets released out into the, the community, it starts to, to get pushed around a bit. So as much as you want something to, to stay how you want it to be, um, once you put it out there, I kind of feel like it's, it's kind of out there and you, you no longer can really control it once you put it out there. So Yeah, for sure. My, my, my opinion of it. You know, it's the same thing with people who pop up on Reddit as a, as a spore vendor. And they're coming up with all these crazy names as a marketing gimmick when it's all just the same print or whatever from a cubensis mushroom. Unless it is like a penis envy or something like that. What you're getting from these people on Reddit is just the same thing recycled over and over with just a different name thrown on it. So people all the time go, uh, post in the Uncle Ben subreddit that, oh, this was supposed to be penis envy, but they're just coming out looking like a basic cubensis, you know, golden teacher some stuff like that so once something is out yeah. there it's, it's not like the 90s or early 2000s anymore on shroomery where it, it was just a tight group like i watched um i listened to the podcast that hamilton did with the original penis envy creator it was very interesting yeah i come across that podcast uh, rich key is the uh, original creator of that yeah Esoteric Synergy asked, how do you make your agar for spores? I heard less LME makes it easier to germinate. Yeah, water agar is a common uh, media for spore germination because you allow the spores to germinate from the moisture in the agar, but there's really not a lot of nutrition to keep any competing bacteria or contaminants away because, you know, if you're growing in tubs or, or you're growing out in the open, the spores that drop can contain fecal flakes and stuff. So... Yeah, less LME is good for spore germinations. We got a donation from Michael Geeky, one dollar. Right now we have ninety viewers. Imagine one dollar from all ninety viewers right now. Shout out to ninety. Rachel A asked, "Would you guys recommend someone buying the Enigma from Inoculate the World, or is it bad juju?" No, we, me and Philly both support drew at inoculate the world if it's in stock like there the, drew runs out of stock on stuff a lot and people will message me like hey you know i really want this and it's it's just because it's that popular so you just gotta be patient yeah chaotic shamanism mentioned the gel and gum plates rachel a what's that podcast just look up hamilton morris penis envy <laughs> All the things that we can search into nowadays. <laughs> Just like, don't go to dicks.com if you're looking for the Dick Sporting Goods store. Well, actually, I think they bought, the beach store. they bought that domain, so I think it redirects. 
<laughs> Michael Dog said, I've looked up Hamilton Moore's penis many times. <laughs> I said, man. Tin Man's in the house. Oh! Adam donated $3. We're now $54 over this goal for this game show. And uh, I'm sorry we didn't have it up on the first episode. We're still working things out, so we're still moving along. If you just joined, the YouTube channel is not monetized yet, so that's why we're using the Streamlab link. Invader Kush, $5. Grow channel, grow. Um, I can see the little messages you, here Invader on Kush. Streamlabs. They pop up yes, as a they... donation. So sorry if yep, I missed some of the that. Yeah, sorry if I missed some of the ones that had messages. So yeah, we're still just, uh, we, we made it through the initial part of the game show. We're just hanging out right now, a little Q&A with the chat. So anything goes right now. Oh yeah, Big Blue Baby Turtle, I forgot about that. Inoculate the World offers to donate your payment for Enigma to charity when you buy it so that your karma remains clean. So that's an option. Um, and if you just joined, the Myco Game Show Discord link is now in the description. So you can join that server and start populating it. And that's where most of the news is going to be posted right away. Um, that's going to hit the... The news is going to hit the Discord first before we post on like Instagram and then the YouTube. Yeah, I think that the, the Discords will be where um, the first lineup information will come out for the micro game show and then from there we, you know the word will spread around we'll announce it on other platforms as well Tickman oh. asks uh, Philly how long do you run Enigma spawn to bulk to harvest about one and a half to two months it's typically what I run Enigma for Esoteric Synergy said, I wish there was a way to clean up spore prints and swabs before putting them to agar. Yeah. That's why if you grow in bags, though, it kind of helps to keep things as clean as possible. Yep. My tip, if you're using swabs, um, when you're trying to get them to germinate, jam them into the agar. That, that always does it for me. You jam it into the agar, you're going to get agar, like... It on the swab itself, like the, the, it'll wet the swab, and that wetness on the agar will seep into the swab and germinate the spores on the swab in case the spores didn't get streaked onto the plate. So jamming it in, I've always noticed that even if nothing grows during the streak, there's something will be growing on the swab because the, the agar helps to hydrate the, the swabs that are, or the spores that are on the swabs. Tip of the cap said you can use hydrogen peroxide on agar, antibiotic agar. Yeah, what you just said, um, not all goes along the lines of what you just said. I find with old swabs, wetting them before dunking them works great. So yeah, just spit on the swab, you know, and then use it. It'll work. Look like Microwave Mycology is looking to make a channel soon. I love Microwave Tech. I've got my Microwave Substrate video going on that it's going to release on Patreon. Which, by the way, our Patreon links are in the description as well. So, mine is still... You just, it's just the wait list right now. So, the, the timeline of when I'm going to release videos on YouTube again, it's not determined. So, it's, I'm going to focus really on Patreon because we're all getting tired of the YouTube strikes and deleting channels and stuff. It's just, it's getting, it's getting out of hand. And yeah, you kind of have to, to dance around the, the fine line of YouTube's TOS guidelines in order not to have your videos striked or demonetized. Yeah, Andrew F said an easier way to run Uncle Ben's is to cut the, is to cut corner cut about four bags and then squirt in the hole, tape it up and done. Yeah, um, if you're really going for bulk with 90 Uncle Ben bags, just... But I like to take my time, you know, kind of massage the rice, 
you know, squirt a little bit in there. Rachel's asking, do any of you guys have a flow hood or thought about building or buying one? Yeah, you you got one. I have a flow hood. If anyone's wondering where I got my flow hood, I got it from Myers Mushroom. And if anyone else is looking, uh, I know ITW is offering them as well. And Lab Rats Flow Hoods is offering up uh, budget flow hoods if you're interested in that kind of thing. Modern uh, as far as building, building one, I never really care to try and build one. Um, I, I would leave that up to the professionals. If you're looking to build one yourself, I know Fresh Cap Tony has a good video on how you can build one yourself if you're looking to do that. Oh, and Gordo Tech with the tub. Or yeah, or you can still use a steel air box. I, I used a steel air box for two years uh, before I decided to upgrade to a flow hood. Uh, Modern Whisper, also known as Baby Blanket, said hello 90 and PGT. That is somebody from the original 90 Discord server, um, which we're all hanging out. I have a secret server that's going to be launched with Patreon, just so people know. Uh, what is this? K Tam Wilder said, "Is Instagram message real? I don't know what what you mean, but if PGT is messaging you on Instagram asking you to buy ecstasy and stuff, that's not PGT." Yeah, in case anyone was questioning on Instagram, there's been a guy that's been making fake accounts pretending to be me, and he's gonna follow you, he's gonna request you, and try and contact you, and try to offer you all this stuff, and. Uh, block him and said that's not me and I tell people I try to warn people he has scammed a couple people of their money already and it's a very unfortunate situation but all I can do is just try to inform you guys so you guys don't get scammed by this guy and uh, yeah I don't use telegram so he tries to bring you on there you know that that's one of the first you know flags on there uh, yeah just be aware of this guy because every time I try to report him to Instagram um, his account would die off and then like two more accounts would pop up <laughs> of it. So he just keeps creating new ones and I don't, I don't know what else that I can do at this point to, to try and stop him. Because this is like yeah. the, the 8 or 9 temp account that he's made now and it's just, it's just an ongoing issue. So I just want to make you guys aware of what's going on so you guys don't get scammed by this guy. Well, I just saw somebody with the cats walking all in my face. Um, they said, oh yeah, JC Cat. It's spelled wrong. Yeah, they try to get creative by like adding an extra I or an extra L so you don't really notice it. Uh, Michael Geeky said, I will match the next donation dollar for dollar. Let's go. All right. Challenge. BD has always said, yeah, I use the 90 unmodified still air box. Yeah, I still just hang it off the counter. It's fine. You sit below it. <laughs> Rob Champ said, fake PGT almost got me. You know, it, people, people who are big fans, when they get a message from an account that looks like it's PGT, yeah, they might fall for it. So... likes the cat I know she's uh plasma asks why do instant rice bags get a bad rep on my college forums <laughs> everybody asks that all the time um I think you have well, a video dedicated to that don't you <laughs> yeah shout out to the haters it's just because people are, are treating them like regular jars or grain bags and they're squirting like 10 cc's in it and it rots or they have bad syringes. Um, people, I guess, just don't like the idea of making your own gas exchange. Like, it just doesn't make sense why people hate it. But Chaotic Shamanism just donated to the show $9.99. But yeah, I don't know. It also, I just think it could just be jealousy too. They're like, oh my god, this works so well. I have to just hate it to fit in. Oh, 
Modern Whisperer as about to start working with some wood lovers. Any advice for pans and related species? Um, <laughs> think, yeah, uh, pans are, are it depends on the pans are more dung lover than wood lovers. Um, but my, my advice is just to have some patience with them and uh, create multiple jars if you're going to inoculate them because in my opinion or my experience um, working with exotics they're a bit more prone to contamination than cubes or they're much weaker at fighting off bacteria than cubes are so oftentimes I, I find stalling it can happen um, if you have issues in your grain so they're very sensitive to that so just make extra jars if you decide to work on a project like that, that way you don't feel bad when, you know, you get set back by some jars going bad. Yeah, I still want to mess with some pans and bends because a lot of people ask me if I've grown them yet on the brown rice, but not yet. Would a 1 to 2 or 1 to 1 still apply for spawning? Modern Whisperer asked. Yeah, people, you know, you go one to one or one to two all the time, or one to one point five. Yeah, I I think that applies for for all mushroom growing. Uh, the more grain spawn you have in there, the the higher chance of success you'd have. Cause more mycelium, more inoculation points, and, and it's just faster for the mycelium to outcompete any bacteria that might try and take off in there. And Tin Man wants to know, Tin Man might go, any tips for someone just starting to pour their own agar? Yeah, um, try not to spill it. Try not to, to knock into your, your stack of plates as <laughs> you yeah. see you have it poured out, because then it'll start uh, touching on the lids and... It, it, it won't look great. I mean, they still work. I still use those plates too, even if the, the lids get covered in agar. Uh, I'm not throw it away. But yeah, I don't you know, have. It, a... it, it can hinder how it looks. So just be careful. Take your time with it, and you know they'll, they'll look good. I don't have one of those laser thermometers, but George Strother said, "Yeah, let it cool to 120 Fahrenheit before pouring." I just wait till I can, like it's hot enough to be able to hold and not burn myself. And it pours just fine. Yeah, Donnie Brasco said, pour at a lower temp to avoid condensation. Work slow, but be fast, if that makes sense. That tip of the cap, I use my hand as a thermometer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, pour so much agar, you can just touch it know exactly when it's ready. Yeah. You can hold it, you can pour it. That's what that's what Tim said. Alright, so how's everybody feeling? We're approaching almost two hours now. I feel like I feel like this has been a pretty good show. We are way over our goal of the donations tonight to go right back into the game show. We're at 178.99. And our original goal was just a simple $100 per show. So awesome support from everybody. Um, the yeah, Discord the server. Coming together. Yeah, it's amazing. The Discord server link is in the description if you're just popping in. That's where you can go for all of the future Myco Game Show announcements, contestant signups in the future, and everything else. Um, what else? What else we have to mention? Oh, the shirt limited run limited run when is your shop open again pgt uh, the 15th the 15th yep but it's available right now through michael valley yeah go check out michael valley if you want it right now uh he has an etsy store just look up michael valley etsy store uh, he's got great. Uh, he's got a lot of other cool products on there. I mean, there's an A plushie that I, I bought from him. I really love that plushie. Uh, he's got awesome stickers and pins on there too. And he ships worldwide. Worldwide shipping from Michael Valley. 
Michael Geeky is the show's top donor right now with over $31 donated to this one show that we hosted tonight. Amazing support. Always showing Michael Geeky support on those podcasts. And we're just trying to give back to the community. It's just something different, you know. Everyone, 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 I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. It's getting late. Past my bedtime. I'm off Tuesday, Wednesdays. Everybody asks me, why is the game show, like, why did I always used to go live at random times of the, of the week? Just because I still work a full-time job. Chef Mike donated with two question marks. <laughs> oh, he, we see. he got us a 200. Thank you, Chef Mike, for your donation. We are at an even 200 for this stream when our goal was only a simple 100 this is you know, you going guys double the goal going right back into the game show because we're not monetized yet on youtube so what pgt mentioned earlier was throw the throw these two episodes up in the background and just let them go let the views accumulate the watch time accumulate and we'll be able to monetize youtube and streamlabs and this way we'll be able to get some get some real stuff going in the future because we're still on the pilot episodes right now just to see how everybody likes it so far great feedback great support from everybody uh, michael geeky said yeah i'm gonna watch this episode 90 times in the next week that's right 90 hours of watch time on just this one show that'd be great yeah right uh p funk don't forget the likes we've got 95 viewers 127 likes, 129 likes going up. Uh, no, Slinkadoo said, is it live watch time only or does rewatching these count? No, just the views in general. Like, um, once we end this stream, it'll be up to watch, you know? So just the watch time in general. Yeah, so if you rewatch it, 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 it counts uh, towards, towards the watch hours. Mastella just subscribed. Oh, thanks for the subscription. I like the little emoji that pops up when people subscribe. <laughs> Rubbing the pin. Uh, Maroon Raccoon, if you set your YouTube to loop the video, will it work? I'm not sure. I don't know. Rachel A said, I might have been late, but at least I could catch the Q&A. Yeah, and you can go back and watch it. It was pretty... Pretty fun show. Tip of the cap said disturbing GIF. <laughs> yeah, that's from that's from the um, the unofficial Uncle Ben's uh, the the unofficial R the Reddit subreddit Uncle Ben's Discord server. They have some of PGT's Discord emojis in there, and they have one of them that was animated. Yeah, everyone subscribed. Let's spam this because get the subs up, get the viewers up. <laughs> you subscribe to the GIF. That's what, yeah. Just make a bunch of YouTube accounts and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think, PGT? What else we got? I think we can call it a show here. It's it's a lot of people are. Yeah, we're we're hitting two hours. Trying to hop off. Yeah. Oh wait. Um. DF. Do you keep a certain amount of grain colonizing while going through the fruiting process? For example, five pounds of grain in rotation while you have a couple of tubs in fruiting process to replace. Um. Yeah. Since well, just being content creators, it helps to always have grain that's ready to go for stuff yeah the nice thing about grains is once they're colonized you can actually let them sit out for a period of time before you, you can use them obviously it's better to use them better quicker sooner right away but they they can last on the shelf for a couple of weeks and if you put them in the fridge you can make them last for months before you can spawn them a uh, modern whisper said question for both of you so if you were to live in a perfect world where space for fruiting is not an issue, how would you fruit? Dub tub, Martha tent, etc. Um, I would definitely just have tents, like huge mushroom rooms where you don't even have to worry about enclosed bags or tubs. Yeah, in the perfect world, a Martha tent would be great. 
I, I just don't like cleaning up after the Martha tent. <laughs> yeah, all that drip and the drip tray and condensation. Um, Invader if Kush I don't has... have to clean the Martha tent, I would use the Martha tent all the time. <laughs> oh, and when you grow oysters, their spores are everywhere. Like, it's not... You, that's why when you see commercial farmers, when they go into the oyster rooms, they have respirators on because of the spores. Oh, we're getting all these yeah. subscribers. Very good. Keep it going. Invader Kush said, I'd like, like that as a shirt. That's a good idea. <laughs> but yeah, before we end here, get all the subs and likes on the second episode, the second pilot of the Myco Game Show. Oh yeah, Rachel asked, have either of y'all ever foraged wild active species? I haven't, um, but I know Drew from Inoculate the World comes around here in Florida to the cow pastures, and that's where some of his wild prints are from, so I know they're around me. But I don't know about up in Philly, what's going on in the woods. Um, up here we have Psilocybe Avoidial Cystidia. That's oh the yeah. Natural wild magic mushroom that grows up here. I haven't gone out to go look for them yet. But it's something I plan to do at some point here to try and look for them because they are native here. Um, yeah, I think that that'll be an interesting one to, to check out. I've recently gone out and uh, foraged for morel mushrooms. So I've got some footage from that that I'll be putting together a video about morel mushrooms for you guys pretty soon. So that's something you guys can look forward to. I saw that post when you picked up some of the morels. Yeah, I, I made out with a buttload of morels at one time. So, so did, are you going to uh, try to clone it, any? Try to get some culture? Um, I, I did put some to, to agar. Uh, it's interesting how the mor morel mycelium grows out. Um, I came across gray morels, and I tried cloning that out because gray morels are pretty rare to find. Usually you get like yellow morels or black morels. But the gray morel to mycelium grows out gray, and it turned the whole oh, plate gray. Was, I've seen that. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I found a bunch of morels, and I hope to, to be able to help other people find them too. Uh, they're just kind of hard to find because they blend in a lot into the ground and you have to like observe the ground from like different angles in order to spot them. It's kind of like finding Waldo <laughs> in, in the ground. That's why I'm like maybe if you can make a mass liquid culture into a big super soaker squirt gun and just squirt it all over the woods and the grass. Be nice to come foraging with Michael Geeky one of these days. I think we can. That's a possibility in the future. If I make yeah. a pit stop over to Ohio. He's up there in Cleveland. That's where I'm from. It's crazy. Uh, like someone, if... someone sent me this little meme picture um, that says more people in Ohio look for mushrooms than they look for jobs. That could be true. Yeah, Rachel said Fresh Cat made a video about where he talked about using a squirt gun to inoculate for us. Well, yeah, so it was a great I'm show. Gonna, I'm gonna yeah, come go down ahead. to Florida. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. Super soak some land down there. And yeah, gonna, I keep telling I'll Drew to inoculate the world. Next time he's over here, let's let's get it going. We'll do like a live stream just in the field with the cows. Um, but yeah, great show tonight. We went two hours. Uh, the beginning of the show was great. PGT was our second contestant for the Myco Game Show, Making History. Um, don't forget that we have the Discord server link in the description. That's where all the Myco Game Show news is going to be firsthand. Um, uh, Sean, Sean, I just want to answer Sean's question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. He asked it twice here with the, the liquid culture. He colonized spores in them. And he's saying that the, the floating bits have a little black dot in the middle. Is that the spore? Uh, it's very possible it is the spore. It's very possible that it could be a piece of the injection pork in there. I've had that happen to my LCs when you're stabbing it in there to inoculate it. An injection port piece kind of falls in there and floats around in there. 
Uh, the best thing that you can do is just test it, test it on agar, and, and you know, see how it grows out on there. I agree. All right, any any last minute plugs? Um, Patreon links are in the description. Discord link is in the description. Um, Streamlabs donation link is in the description because the YouTube channel is not monetized yet. Um, what else? Oh, your wife's Instagram account if people want to follow for art. Art of Mushy. Oh. Yeah, Art of Mushy on Instagram is where she posts all of her art. Uh, she posts comics and stuff related to mycology on there. So if you're interested in seeing mycology comics, uh, Art of Mushy on Instagram. Uh, and then real quick, Sour Flower said, wanting to keep my identity private, what's the avatar you're using? If you want to give it away or not, maybe it's secret. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to keep it secret. I want to share with people that are interested. Um, the, the program I'm using is called Animaze, A-N-I-M-A-Z-E. It's a free software, so you can mess with that if you're interested in, in becoming like a virtual avatar. Yeah, and the first show, everybody thought PGT was a carrot, but he was a banana with a wig on. So if you want to go check out the first show, it's up on the channel, the first pilot episode. Um, well, yeah, we just hit two hours. I think that is it. It was a blast. Thanks for all the support because who said who said that? Um, yeah, Slinkadoo had a blast and a half. And we will see you guys in the next show. Remember, join the Discord server. The link is in the description, and that's where all of the updates are going to be. And before we close out here, over here in the bottom right, Chef Michael was this show's top donor with a little over $31. Just right over Michael Geeky. And thank you guys for the support, and thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, we hope to see you all at the next game show here. It looks like I froze on my end, but that's okay. We're going to hit the uh, ending scene. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.